This is the iPhone 14 Plus. It's essentially an iPhone 14 that's bigger, or an iPhone 14 Pro Max that's scaled back with less features and a lower price. Look, however you wanna think about it, a lot of people are gonna be happy to have a big iPhone that doesn't cost $1,100. Hi, I'm Patrick Holland, and this is my review of the iPhone 14 Plus. Before we jump in, let me say that I reviewed the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max not too long ago. In my video, I go over the dynamic island, the new cameras, the A16 Bionic processor. Look, there's a link in the description. Make sure you check that out. I also reviewed the regular iPhone 14. The link also is in the description. And since the 14 and 14 Plus are basically different sizes of the same phone, I didn't just want to rehash my 14 review video. So in this video, I'm going to share my experience using the review unit of the iPhone 14 Plus that Apple lent me. I'm gonna compare the design, camera, batteries, and processor to the iPhone 14, 14 Pro Max, as well as older large iPhone models like the iPhone XS Max and iPhone 8 Plus. There's chapters in the description so you can skip around at your will. And with all that out of the way, let's dive into the iPhone 14 Plus. If you take a look at the iPhone 14 lineup, Apple did the old switcheroo. The iPhone mini that was part of the iPhone 13 and 12 family is now gone. Apple went big and replaced the 5.4 inch iPhone mini with a 6.7 inch iPhone 14 plus. So now we have two sizes of the iPhone, one with a 6.1 inch screen and the other with a 6.7 inch display. And you can choose between a regular version or a pro model. The iPhone 14 lineup is the most straightforward Apple phone lineup in years. And as someone who is a big fan of the iPhone mini, I'm sad it's gone. But year after year, we see that people prefer bigger phones. And that means the iPhone 14 Plus should be very popular. Ever since the iPhone XS Max launched in 2018, if you wanted a large screen iPhone, you had one choice, pay top dollar and get a Max model with features you might not necessarily need, like better cameras or a high refresh rate display. I know many CNET readers, as well as friends and coworkers, who have shelled out $1,100 or more for a 12 Pro Max or 13 Pro Max because it's the only way to get a phone the size they wanted. But that changes now. The iPhone 14 Plus and its 6.7 inch display gives you a larger canvas for watching videos, playing games, and taking photos. One way to think of the 14 Plus is that you can fit more onto the screen. For example, in mail, when you're in landscape mode, you can see a list of previews on the left side. It's a nice, simple change to the interface, but it came out with the iPhone 6 Plus meaning I wish there was more iOS 16 features that took advantage of the 14 Plus's giant screen. Like a side-by-side -side app view would be amazing on this screen. Another way to think about the 14 Plus's screen is that it can show everything the 14 can, just larger, which as my eyes get a bit older, I definitely welcome. The iPhone 14 Plus starts at $899. That's $200 less than the 14 Pro Max and only $100 more than the regular 14. And since the iPhone 14 Plus is just a larger version of the 14, you get all of its new features. Now, many of these are things you might never use or you don't necessarily see which can be kind of deceiving. So for example, you get crash detection that can notify emergency services when you're in an automobile accident. And starting in November, you get emergency SOS via satellite that when you're out of cell range, lets you use a satellite to message emergency services. You get a new selfie camera, you get a new main camera with action mode that applies a heavy duty stabilization to eliminate shakes and bumps during video recording. You also get an upgraded cinematic mode that now lets you record it in 4K resolution and at 24 frames per second. The iPhone 14 Plus, like all phones in the 14 series, uses an eSIM only in the United States. Setting up an eSIM or transferring one is mostly clear cut, but it did take me a few tries with my Google Fi SIM card 
but I eventually got it transferred. The 14 Plus also comes with a similar internal redesign that improves thermal management and makes the back glass easier and cheaper to repair since it's no longer attached to the internals. Like the 14, the 14 Plus has an aluminum body with matte finished sides and a glossy glass back. The one I tested was in purple, which in some situations looked nearly white, and in others is a bright spring purple color. It kind of reminds me of the purple iPhone 11. Of course, most people are going to probably put a case on this, but Apple has your back since it makes a silicone phone case that's also purple. In terms of size, the 14 Plus is nearly identical to the 14 Pro Max, but when it comes to weight, that's where the differences are the most noticeable. The 14 Plus is 36 grams lighter than the 14 Pro Max and three grams lighter than the smaller iPhone 14 Pro. And when I hold the iPhone 14 Plus, I can tell immediately that it's lighter than the Pro Max. Now, a lot of that weight savings comes because this is an aluminum body versus the stainless steel one on the Pro models, but also because the 14 Plus has two rear cameras instead of three, like the pros do. In my review of the iPhone 14, I described the phone like Apple repackaged the iPhone 13 Pro's 815 Bionic chip and main camera into an iPhone 13 body. And the same applies here. There is an ultra-wide camera and a main camera on the back. The main one is identical to the main camera on the iPhone 13 Pro. The lens on the 14 and 14 Plus has a faster f1.5 aperture, which combined with Apple's new processing pipeline called Photonic Engine helps improve photo quality. It's not a drastic improvement, but in low light situations and when you're in dimmer locations, you can definitely see the difference. Now here are some photos and videos that I shot with the iPhone 14 Plus. So for this video, I decided to take an iPhone 14 Plus, a 14 Pro Max, a 10s Max, and an 8 Plus out to take photos and videos. Look, I figured there's going to be a lot of people with old Plus and Max models of the iPhone that are interested in upgrading to the 14 Plus. So what better way than compare how photos and videos look from all these different phones? In daylight, all four phones take decent photos. Notice the building on the left and how well the 14 Pro Max rolls off the highlights. In terms of detail, take a look at the building in the middle. In the photos from the 10s Max and 8 Plus, the building's details aren't as crisp as the pics from the 14 Plus and 14 Pro Max, both of which captured the texture of the stones better. Look closely at the leaves on the left side of the photos. In the 8 Plus's photo, the leaves look soft and the detail is muddy. It's slightly better in the 10s Max photo. Here's another series of daylight shots featuring my pal and CNET colleague, Jessica Fierro. Again, all look like decent pictures. Notice that in the background of the 8 Plus photo, the building's highlights are blown out to white. If we take a close look at the photos at 100%, we start to see more differences. There's a lot of contrast in the 8 Plus's photo, details look soft in the 10s Max photo, and it's hard to see any real differences between the 14 Pro Max and 14 Plus. I mean, look, if I was super duper picky, I'd say that the 14 Pro Max's photo has slightly better definition and clarity. Slightly. And last, we have these photos of a fire escape at night. Right off the bat, you can tell there's a big difference with two of the photos. Both the 14 Plus and 14 Pro Max have night mode. The 10s Max and 8 Plus don't, which result in darker photos with more image noise and softer details. The photos from the 14 Plus and 14 Pro Max are kind of hard to tell apart. If I view them at 100%, the 14 Plus's pick has less noise in the night sky compared to the photo from the 14 Pro Max. But take a close look 
at the red sign on the fire escape. The letters look crisp and sharp on the 14 Pro Max's photo, and they look soft in the 14 Plus's photo. Look, I handheld all of the phones when I took these photos, so some of that softness could be handshake. In terms of battery, well, the 14 Plus easily makes it through a day and a half on a single charge. Now, I only had this phone for five days and still have more battery tests to do, but I was able to run a couple. Over 45 minutes, I played video games like Mario Kart Tour, Alto's Odyssey, Asphalt 8, Airborne Plus, PUBG Mobile, as well as watched YouTube videos, took a three minute FaceTime video call and scrolled TikTok, and the battery dropped from 100% to 95%. Now, I ran the same 45 minute test on the regular iPhone 14 and the battery dropped 10%, twice as much. So, should you get a 14 Plus? Well, let's break this down. If you're considering between a 14 Plus and a 14 Pro Max and you don't need a telephoto camera or a high refresh rate screen, I say go with the 14 Plus. Yes, the Pro Max has a better processor, but the one on the 14 Plus is still lightning fast. And yes, the 14 Pro Max can take 48 megapixel photos, which let's be honest, most people don't need. Now, if you're someone with an iPhone 11 Pro Max or older and are only interested in a bigger screen, you'll be blown away by the 14 Plus. You get a better screen, faster processor, better cameras, better battery life, better durability if you drop it, as well as all these emergency features that just came out. And if you're coming from a Plus model iPhone with a 5.5 inch screen, the 14 Plus is gonna seem like a mansion. And now, I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think about the iPhone 14 Plus? Are you considering getting one? Let me know in the comments. Lastly, do all the YouTube things, like, subscribe, hit the bell, and thank you for watching.